Hi there folks, this is not a complicated video, but it's a wee quick video on how to make uh, tikka paste for curries. It doesn't need to just be used in tikka masala, it can be used in various curries, but it gives you that underlying tikka paste flavour set for starting your curry. Um, I much prefer making my own pastes because they are just so much more flavoursome than the stuff you buy in jars. The stuff you buy in jars does a good job, but it's just not as good as making your own paste and they really are difficult. It's one of the simplest things you can do when it's making your curries and making your own pastes. So let's crack on and let's do this. First thing we want to measure out is two tablespoons of coriander seed, which we can then stick straight into our mortar and pestle. And we follow that up with two tablespoons of whole cumin seed, again straight into the mortar and pestle. And because these are very firm seeds, it's now time for a lot of elbow grease because grinding these down in the mortar and pestle is a bit of a chore, but you do get nicely ground seed at the end if you take your time and go through it. However, as I've said in the past, why have a dog and bark yourself? If you've got a mechanical means of doing it, a power tool, use it because it's so much faster and the results are just as good maybe even potentially slightly better compared to what you get on the mortar and pestle. As we see here, the ground spices are absolutely wondrous looking and more importantly, they are oh so fragrant. Mm, you can almost smell it through the screen. They really are rich in smell when you do it this way. And now take and dump those spices directly into a medium sized mixing bowl taking good care to make sure that you get all the ground spice out of either your mortar and pestle or out of the machine that you're using. Because we don't want any waste here. And to the same mixing bowl, we are now going to add one and a half tablespoons of garlic powder, followed by two tablespoons of sweet paprika, otherwise known as paprika, they're the same thing, just not smoked paprika. And next, it's one tablespoon of garam masala. Now, I do make my own garam masala every now and then, but it is a lot of effort when the jarred stuff is pretty decent as well. So there's two ways of doing it. Either make your own garam masala or buy the jarred stuff. And then it's one and a half tablespoons of ground ginger and two teaspoons of mild chilli powder. You wanted more of a kick you possibly could go hot but I think you're better sticking with the mild chilli powder for this personally and next half a teaspoon of ground turmeric then one tablespoon of dried basil and to round off our spices and seasoning a quarter of a teaspoon of table salt and whilst everything's still dry, grab a small spatula and just give everything a good mix together until you see it all blended well. Once fully blended, the first of the wet ingredients that we're going to be adding is one teaspoon of lemon juice, followed by two and a half centimetres to three centimetres of yellow food gel. Now the food gel is better than the liquid food colouring because it's so much more intense. Two and a half to three centimetres. And repeat for red food gel. Again, two and a half towards three centimetres red food gel. And next up, we're adding 150 millilitres of white wine vinegar and give everything a really thorough mix together. And now measure out 150 millilitres of cooking oil and set that aside. You can just use the same jug that you had your white wine vinegar in. To our mixing bowl, we now want to add two tablespoons, 30 millilitres of water. And again, give everything a thorough mix together. And now add your cooking oil to a non-stick sotus pan or a wok and bring it up to a medium heat. We're looking for the oil to get to 100 degrees Celsius. Once it's at 100 degrees Celsius, we'll start cooking. So either use a probe thermometer or use an infrared thermometer just to take, check the temperature of the oil as it heats. And once the oil is at 100 degrees Celsius, 
we're going to add in all of our spice mixture just be careful as you're putting it in you don't want any splash back because there is a lot of oil in there but gently put it back into the the pan once it gets up to 90 degrees celsius because there will be a bit of thermal shock and it will lose a bit of temperature so once it gets back to 90 degrees celsius we're going to cook it for 10 minutes now you'll know your tikka paste is ready once the 10 minutes is up you should start to see the oil sitting always on the surface of the actual paste once you've cooked it down and that's when you know it's ready so 10 minutes in oil should be sitting along the surface of the actual paste if that's where we're at your tikka paste is now ready now let your tikka paste cool for 30 minutes just so you don't get burnt and then we're going to transfer it into a sterile jam jar or something of a similar nature just use your spatula and gently try and slide it in without spilling it down the sides like idiot myself here did just there so slide it into the jar and then we're going to seal it with a lid now this is a really rich a really flavoursome tikka paste it's so much better than any tikka paste in any jar i have ever tried and it's also wonderfully fragrant after you've cooked this your house is going to smell of tikka paste all those lovely indian spices for days on end afterwards mm, it's joyous it's lovely it's so 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 fragrant but we're going to seal it in the jar and we're going to set it aside it will keep like this for several weeks in the jar absolutely no problems you can top it up with a little bit more oil on top of it if you need to because that just helps keep it um, protected from anything potentially getting grown on it always use a clean spoon when you stick it in there to use it you can also freeze this i use ice cube trays and um, the ones i've got are wonderful because each one of them is half a tablespoon give or take a couple of millimeters in size so the count is half tablespoon measures as far as i am concerned so if you're not using it within a few weeks then you can stick it into them measure them out and you've got half tablespoon measures otherwise You've got a lovely tikka paste that you can use straight off there and then. I tend to fridge mine. Um, it's up to you how you store it, but for the several weeks that mine last, they're stored in the fridge. So there we go. Homemade tikka paste. Dead easy, dead simple. So much better than the jarred stuff, and your house is going to smell lovely for it. Rather than showing you my jarred stuff, though, that's how you freeze it. Little cubes like that. I sat it out and forgot to fill it this, it's a little bit defrosted. It's going back in the freezer now. But that's all you do is stick it into your ice cube trays, which I use these ones. Lots of the different types of pound shops. Uh, B&M stores, I've all seen them selling them in Scotland and the UK. So it's these ones with the little silicon pressers. They're almost exactly half a tablespoon. Um, it's a millimetre or two at most out uh, slightly more rather than slightly less um, which is close enough for measurements for tablespoons for most recipes if not every recipe especially if we're talking things like tikka pastes so crack on make your own stuff smell in your house will thank you for it alone take care stay safe my friends all the best and again thanks for watching i know there's so many cooking videos on the planet Thousands upon thousands of thousands, so I really do appreciate it when you watch my videos. Anyway, stay safe. All the best.